uh, what this is about. Okay, so in this uh, section on manifolds of mappings, I want to discuss the concept of, uh, of um, um, manifold structure on um, space of smooth mappings, which uh, reaps the benefits of having an exponential law. So in the last section, we uh, saw that uh, it was quite, um, well, quite annoying to establish this uh, exponential law, so we had to work hard to, to get it. But uh, at least in uh, some easy cases, we, we have established now this exponential law. And um, so let's, uh, let's now um, define a manifold structure on manifolds of mappings, which uh, requires that this exponential law holds. So let, uh, what do I mean by this? So let K and M be manifolds in this section and, and uh, essentially afterwards. We will always assume that K is a, is a compact manifold, but nevertheless. So um, a manifold, uh, a smooth manifold structure on the C infinity function from K with values of M is called canonical if the underlying topology uh, of this space is the, uh, of the manifold is the compact open C infinity topology. And for each, uh, in the particular for, uh, for possibly for every infinite dimensional smooth manifold n, and a smooth map from n to the C infinity functions um, uh, into, uh, uh, so the, from n to the C infinity function from k to m, the map f is, C, uh, is of class C infinity if and only if this f wedge, uh, which we saw already, is of class C infinity. So uh, if this holds, then we call a manifold structure canonical on this space of mappings. And um, okay, so what we what we have seen is if uh, M is, uh, say, for example, an open subset of a locally convex space, then we have seen that uh, this manifold, or the canonical manifold, oh, should use canonical to often, but the manifold structure we have, uh, we have on this space is canonical because we've established the um, the exponential law for the setting. And um, so what this definition asks is two things. On one hand, we want to be sure what the topology is. It should be the compact open C infinity topology. And then the second item here just blatantly asks for the uh, for a version of the exponential law to be true, so for a, relative str a relatively strong version of the exponential law to be true, actually. And um, well, so the advantage of this uh, of this approach is, I mean, we can uh, we can now talk abstractly about uh, properties these canonical manifolds of mappings have, um, with our, uh, with while postponing for a little bit the hassle of proving that uh, such a ma uh, such a canonical manifold structure actually exists, right? So um, the uh, most of the uh, most of the results in this um, section will be of the following kind. So assume that you have a canonical manifold on the C infinity functions, um, then the following holds true. So we will basically prove abstractly properties of these canonical uh, manifolds of mappings. However, uh, at least uh, for today and uh, probably also for, for a bit uh, the next session, we will postpone the question of whether such a canonical manifold structure actually exists, right? I mean, what you really want is you take the smooth functions from a compact manifold with where you say, first approximation, you definitely want this uh, to be true for finite dimensional manifolds, right? So you want uh, that, the, uh, that whenever you have a finite dimensional manifold, you can endow the smooth functions from a compact manifold with, into this finite dimensional manifold with a canonical manifold structure. It turns out that this is indeed possible, at least for, say, paracompact finite dimensional manifolds. And uh, you can find a sketch of the argument of how you construct this in uh, the appendix C of uh, the lecture notes. However, uh, we shall postpone these questions of whether such a thing actually exists and first deduce some interesting properties of these canonical manifolds. And um, so the reason why we are interested in these canonical manifolds is so let's switch again over to the um, to the uh, e chalk if you want. So uh, two point three manifolds of 
mappings. The reason why we will be interested later on in uh, these canonical manifold structures, for example, okay, let's take an example, we already know that such, such a thing exists. We take a compact set, a uh, compact manifold, and then we take all the compact, um, and all the mappings going into um, the two-dimensional space. And what we will be wanting to be doing later is, so we want to take a curve with the values um, in this space, it's the infinity curve, for example, um, and uh, ask ourselves, when is this a curve realizing the shortest distance between two points in C infinity K2. And it will turn out that to answer this question, uh, we can cheat a little bit. Well, okay, we can we can take um, the exponential law and then study the wedge curve. Oh, sorry, it's not a curve anymore because it is now two parameters. So we can take the wedge map and study a two-dimensional problem to understand what. I mean, on one hand, what do we mean by shortest distance, and um, then to establish some sort of shortest distance uh, property. So the, the point here will be that whenever we have a canonical manifold, we can reduce a lot of questions, at least when it comes to the differentiability and derivatives of mappings into this uh, space of smooth mappings or this canonical manifold, we can reduce it to a possibly finite dimensional problem. Depends, of course, on what your problem is, but uh, okay. So let's, um, let's see a, a lemma now which um, collects some of the good properties of uh, canonical manifolds. And as I said, we are not uh, really proving that um, manifold or the manifolds mappings are canonical. However, uh, we shall assume it for the moment that we have a canonical manifold structure. So K will always be a compact um, manifold and M can be a possibly infinite dimension manifold. So, and uh, if, the space of methods is endowed with a canonical manifold structure. Then the following holds. First of all, the evaluation map from the C infinity function is k to m times k there is m is a smooth map note actually when we were proving the exponential law for the case of um, m being uh, say an open subset of a locally convex space we proved actually that the evaluation map is smooth before we had um, the exponential law. However, um, we just, I mean, for a canonical manifold, we just require that the exponential law is true. So uh, we don't know a priori whether the evaluation map will actually be smooth. Second statement canonical manifold structures are unique if they exist. What I mean by this, if you have a, if C infinity KM is a canonical manifold, and uh, you, might, you, might, uh, you might think that there might be another canonical manifold structure which is different, but it turns out that um, you only have one choice if there, if it exists. So, that next statement: if we have a submanifold, um, such that the C infinity function K to N become a submanifold of the C infinity function K to M. 
than the submanifold structure. and is canonical. So this is inherited given that you have a submanifold. Okay, and another inheritance property, so if M1, 2, is infinity manifolds, such that on both spaces, then the manifold is the infinity of k m1 times the infinity of k to m2. This is canonically isomorphic to the uh, space of smooth man from k to m1 times m2. Uh, so it turns out that this is also a canonical manifold. So canonical manifolds play nicely with respect to submanifolds and Cartesian products or the hysteric product manifolds, which is uh, which will be useful later on. Okay, let us prove this. Um, so what was A again? Um, we want to see that the evaluation map is smooth. Okay. First of all, we know that the identity map from Km to Km uh, C infinity KM uh, is smooth, well, is the identity, since uh, C infinity KM is canonical, it follows that it wedge, so the wedged map, this one, this is mapping from C infinity km times k into m. What does it do? It takes gamma and x and sends it to it gamma then x. Or in other words, this is gamma of x. Or in other words, this is the evaluation of gamma and x. This is smooth by the enforced version of the exponential law. So, and this establishes the smoothness for the evaluation map. So we're done here. Okay. Um, right. So we now want to see that there's only one, so statement B was the canonical manifold structures are unique. So, um, okay, so assume that there is another canonical manifold structure. Let's say we write this so, I mean, we need another symbol to define, uh, to denote this space with another canonical manifold. So let's use a tilde over this. So this is the same space, it's still the C infinity functions. Uh, however, this has now a different manifold structure, and we want to see uh, um, that the identity mapping from our space with the first canonical manifold structure to the space with the diff possibly different canonical manifold structure that this is um, uh, smooth diffeomorphism. Okay, how do we do this? Um, so let's give this guy here a shorthand, so we call this F. Um, we note um, that if I take the wedge of F, then I get the evaluation map. Uh, 
and this is a smooth map by part A, right? Since both of them are canonical manifolds. Um, so this is a smooth map. Uh, so the F wedge is just the evaluation. Uh, and C, I mean, okay, by A. So this evaluation we have here is the evaluation of C infinity K M times K to M. And what this implies is that if I take the F wedge and then take the V, we know that we get back the identity mapping. However, this time we get back the identity mapping from Km to the infinity Km tilde. This is smooth since um, the infinity Km tilde is a canonical manifold. Okay, so taking the wedge, we are actually hiding the manifold structure, but going back to it, we are exploiting that uh, also the tilde uh, manifold structure is canonical. Uh, so similarly, we uh, see that the identity mapping, it's called identity tilde from C infinity M. Uh, Oh, sorry, C infinity Km to tilde to C infinity Km is smooth when C infinity Km is diffeomorphic to C infinity Km tilde. Yeah, so this is the uniqueness of the um, of the uh, of the manifold structure. So there, if there's another one, it needs to be the same. Okay, so now prove C. What about C again? So if we have a sub-manifold uh, such that also the um, the space of mappings into the sub-manifold becomes a sub-manifold of, uh, of the canonical manifold, then we have automatically that it's canonical. Okay, so let's see. Um, so as C infinity Kn is a sub-manifold, of uh, C infinity K M, uh, the inclusion yota from C infinity K N values in C infinity K M is smooth. This was in the chapter on manifolds. And this was lemma one. Um, likewise, the inclusion J of the target spaces, so from N to M is C infinity, because also N is a sub-manifold of M. Okay. Um, so let now L be a manifold. We want to check that the um, exponential law holds for the submanifold, right? Because this is what makes the submanifold structure canonical. So we have to show that this guy here, so in a mapping F from L to C infinity, Kn is uh, smooth if and only if. Um, the uh, wedge map L times K to N is C infinity. Okay, right, so let's see this. Um, okay, we have to prove two directions. So if F is smooth, then Yota composed with F is smooth. And Yota composed with F wedge. This is now the mapping from L times K, taking values in M, X, Y, going to F of X of Y. This is seen. Uh, this is smooth since 
C infinity functions from K to M are canonical. However, okay, since the image of F is included in C, there uh, is in, in, uh, included in N, we see that um, F wedge, this is the mapping iota composed with F wedge, and then we co-restrict it to N, is class infinity. This establishes one direction. Conversely, assume that the wedge map from L times K with values in N is smooth. Then also iota composed with F wedge, this is same as J composed with F wedge. Um, now from the signature this is L times K going to M is the class C infinity. And this proves that iota composed with F uh, from L to C infinity KM is smooth. Uh, again, since the C infinity mappings from K to M are canonical. Now we apply lemma 1, 3, 12 again. So note, this was again the lemma, if we have a mapping into a submanifold such that the composition of this mapping with the inclusion of the submanifold is smooth, then the mapping is already smooth as a mapping into the submanifold. Uh, so this means that F is C infinity and we have now proven, uh, we have now proved equivalence. So we have, uh, we have now that um, F as a mapping into this uh, in, uh, infinite dimension submanifold is C infinity if and only if F wedge is C infinity. And this implies that the submanifold structure is of class, uh, is a canonical submanifold. Okay. Now, finally, uh, we have the statement about the um, about the product of the manifolds, right? So what this says is, if we have a uh, if we have two manifolds such that on the C infinity mappings from K into either one of these manifolds we have canonical manifold structure, then also the Cartesian product of both of these things is canonical. And furthermore, we have this isomorphism. Okay, so let us check that the uh, manifold structure is canonical. So let again L be a manifold and F uh, be a mapping F1, F2 from L with values in M1 times M2. Oh, sorry. Uh, I will, I want to do the, not the M1, M2, I want to go, of course, into the manifolds of mappings to check. Then this is smooth if and only if the wedge map is smooth. Okay. Um, so since we have a, since we have a product, F is smooth if and only if F1 and F2 are smooth. Um, as the manifold structures or the manifolds are canonical. This holds if and only if the mappings fi wedge 
So those go from L2 times K, take values in MI, and are of course defined as XY goes to uh, FI of X, Y are smooth. And uh, this is the case if and only if f wedge so this is easy to check it's one wedge and f2 wedge is smooth and what we have seen now we started with the mapping f into this product and um, we see that this mapping is smooth if and only if the wedged map on the cartesian product of the domains is of class c infinity okay and this concludes this proof. So we are uh, we have now our statement. Um, what is why why am I showing you this proof and what is what is the typical thing here? Um, this when you study the proof of this lemma, you basically see what is almost always going to happen when you're working with canonical manifolds and you are asking yourself, is this mapping smooth? Um, you are always hitting everything in sight with the exponential law. And then usually you can figure out a concrete formula for, um, the, uh, for the wedge map. Or, uh, well, if, uh, often it's easier to establish smoothness for the wedge map. And then just if you know smoothness for the wedge map, then the exponential law shows that also the mapping into the smooth mappings is what's smooth, right? Uh, I mean, recall when we established the exponential law showing that the mapping into this uh, manifolds of mappings is smooth. That was a, a terrible hassle to do because we always had to deal with this compact open C infinity topology. Whereas uh, on, uh, on this canonical, uh, canonical manifold setting, when we reduce it to the wedge map, for the wedge map, we just need to compute partial derivatives. Um, in our case, so K is always a finite dimensional manifold. L may be infinite dimensional, but um, so I mean, if both of them are infinite, uh, are finite dimensional, then uh, this becomes a question of taking partial derivatives of mappings defined on finite dimension manifolds. And this is really the power of this concept of a canonical manifold. So if we have a canonical manifold, we have available the full power of the exponential law for our arguments. And we will really exploit this in the, uh, in the next sessions of the, of the lecture when we will study, um, for example, um, Lee groups uh, built from smooth mappings. So, um, for example, of this type are the so-called loop groups, which will be treated in a later chapter. These are, you take the smooth mappings from the circle, so take the unit circle in R2, and you take a Lee group, say, for example, uh, if you don't know what a Lie group is, don't worry, we will define this in the next session. But uh, so, for example, you take your favorite Lie group, say, for example, invertible matrices of size n, right? And then this guy here is the loop group of uh, this Lie group. Okay, so now we have GN. R, so let's just be consistent with the notation. Um, n times n matrices. And many questions of uh, about this group. I mean, this is a group just by taking the point-wise multiplication uh, of mappings. So uh, we have f multiplied with g. And f and g are both in here. This is by definition evaluated x is f of x multiplied with g of x, where the product is taken in the group on the right hand side. Right? And um, so, what we will see is in this situation, we always have canonical manifold structures. And this will allow us to study, for example, these loop groups 
uh, using techniques from finite dimensional calculus. At least several questions can be reduced to, um, to simpler questions on finite dimensional manifolds in this case. Okay, and then um, this is it for today. And we will continue next time with this chapter on um, well, canonical manifold structures before we will then uh, deal with uh, the question, does such a canonical manifold structure exist or under which conditions does it exist? And what can we really do with it uh, from the perspective of infinite dimension geometry?